Am I free to go? I want my lawyer now. I want a lawyer right now. Mr. Nolan, it's for you. My name is Patrick Nolan. I'm an attorney licensed in the state of Missouri. This is Pat Talks Law. Welcome back. I want to start this video off with a little bit about my background. I am an Army veteran. I was a cavalry tanker. Now, I've also served when I was in Southwest Missouri State on the university pistol team in college. And while my certification has lapsed, I was an NRA certified pistol, rifle, and shotgun instructor. And I taught Missouri concealed carry classes prior to attending law school. I have meddled in every shooting competition I've ever entered. I'm a gun guy. And today we are going to talk about one of the most important and understated firearms related criminal court cases in recent history, United States v. Joseph Rowe. Joseph Rowe broke the Gun Control Act. Literally, he broke it. For more than a year, Rowe sold 80% lower receiver blanks and parts to assemble an AR-15. Court records show that his customers could push a button, pull a lever, and walk away a short time later with a fully assembled, untraceable, semi-automatic weapon for about $1,000. Some of those customers were prohibited from legally possessing firearms. The ATF warned him. The ATF threatened him. But five years after raiding his business and indicting him, federal authorities quietly cut a deal with Roe earlier this year and agreed to drop the charges. The judge in the case had issued a tentative order that, you know, frankly now as the prosecutors, threatened to upend the decades-old Gun Control Act and seriously undermine the ATF's ability to trace and regulate firearms nationwide. Under U.S. District Court Judge James Selna, interpretation of the law, convicted felons and other people prohibited from possessing firearms would be allowed to legally acquire all of the parts necessary to assemble an AR-15 style rifle and other weapons, according to inflammatory statements made by federal prosecutors. AR-15s, however, do not have a single receiver that meets the definition of a receiver, one regulated part in a firearm. Now, what's known as the frame or receiver, a piece that, among other things, provides the housing for the hammer and firing mechanism of a firearm. Although that is incapable of firing around, the part that is considered a gun in its own right and is subject to the same restrictions as a fully intact firearm. Manufacturers must stamp it with serial number and licensed dealers are required to conduct background checks on prospective buyers. AR-15s have both an upper and a lower receiver two parts as opposed to a single part described in the law. At issue in Rowe's case is whether or not the law could be fairly interpreted to apply to just the lower receiver portion of the AR-15, as the ATF has been doing for decades. Federal law enforcement officials and members of Congress have been on notice about potential problem with the language in the federal gun law as it applies to AR-15 since at least 2016. In July of that year, prosecutors in Northern California abandoned the case against a convicted felon, Alejandro Jimenez, after a judge found that the AR-15 lower receiver he was accused of purchasing in an ATF undercover sting did not meet the definition of a receiver under the law. Rowe, who called his company ROHG Industries, had been on the ATF's radar since at least 2012. He met that summer with agency representatives regarding selling unfinished lower receivers, the 80% lowers, because they are roughly 80% complete. The part which surrounds the trigger area of the AR-15 requires additional machining and drilling before it can be considered a regulated firearm under the law. Rowe sent the ATF a sample of one of his unfinished lower receivers, and he was seeking a determination as to whether it constituted a firearm or not. And he was advised that it did not. Look, this is common. There are thousands of videos on YouTube about milling an 80% receiver for ARs to 1911s. Hell, there are even patterns for making and bending sheet metal for AKs and other firearms. You know, I know a number of people have built rifles from 80% blanks, and there's a great video series on machining an AR lower from recycled brass. And frankly, it looks awesome. The question for Rowe was the build parties he was hosting. Rowe sent a letter to the ATF. He graduated from simply selling unfinished lower receivers. He embarked on a new venture. Quote, here at ROHD Industries have been doing build parties for quite some time, he wrote. Now, the customer installs the part into our machine and pushes the start button, he explained. And he asked if it was legal. Now, the ATF wrote back calling the party manufacturing 
and that would require a manufacturer's license serial numbers and background checks but he told undercover agents to go ahead and press the green button after that and you know the agent said the green button and road replies yeah that basically means that you did it believe it or not uh, i think they chose not a member of Rowe's staff then oversaw the process of machining and drilling that converted the unfinished lower receiver, an innocuous chunk of metal, into the finished receiver that the ATF considered a firearm under the law. Rowe then added the barrel, stocks, bolts, triggers, and other parts to make it a fully functioning rifle. He was charged in October of 2014 with manufacturing and dealing in firearms without a license. He pleaded not guilty and opted for a bench trial. After both sides presented their evidence, the defense filed a motion for judgment of acquittal, arguing that the government's case against Roe was legally flawed because the charges were based upon a violation of an internal ATF classification as opposed to federal law. Roe's attorney argued that the definition of a receiver under relevant federal code differed in various ways from the AR-15 component Roe was accused of manufacturing. Under the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations, a firearm frame or receiver is defined as, quote, that part of a firearm which provides housing for the hammer, bolt, breech block, and firing mechanism, and which is usually threaded at its forward portion to receive the barrel. The lower receiver in Rowe's case does not have a bolt or a breech block and is not threaded to receive a barrel. Now, as you'll note, the stock, the barrel is in the upper receiver, not the lower. Now the trial lasted about a week. Judge Selna deliberated for more than a year. In April 2019, he issued a tentative order in which he determined that the ATF had improperly classified the AR-15 lower receivers in Roe's case as firearms. Therefore, the judge determined that Roe did not violate the law by manufacturing receivers. Selna did, however, find that Roe was guilty of selling completed firearms on a license at his build parties, which did subject him to a potential prison sentence. Following the tentative order, the prosecution and the defense agreed to a deal. Roe would plead guilty to the charge of selling without a license, and he would be allowed to withdraw that plea if he stayed out of trouble for one year. He accepted that deal to avoid a permanent conviction and possible prison time for dealing in firearms without a license. Selling the 80% lower, however, is legal. Hell, they can be bought for as little as 60 bucks or you can cast them from recycled uh, pop cans or spent brass. Roe just went a little bit too far. Now, thank you for watching. That is one of, that is possibly the most important case when we look at the criminality and the attempted criminality of the AR-15, the ubiquitous black rifle that's called an assault weapon by people who don't know what the hell they're talking about. I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and like, subscribe if you thought this was uh, worth your time. Thank you very much. We did recently open up Patreon. If you go to patreon.com, Pat Talks Law, consider sponsoring us, supporting us, and uh, we're also going to be coming out with some smart ass t shirts to mirror old smart ass signs. So we'll have some shirts that should be interesting. Um, go ahead and keep an eye on our, our page, and we'll have information available for that. Now, for people considering becoming a Patreon, we did place all of our medical marijuana lease addendums on there as a perk, so whatever level of Patreon you choose to sign up for, you will have immediate access to that packet of lease addendums. Instead of having to pay 25 bucks for it, you can sign up as a Patreon, support us, and get access to it. And they are valid for use here anywhere in Missouri. If you're not in Missouri, please don't try to use them or you will need to modify them to fit whatever your state is. And I can't uh, back those. But uh, thank you very much and we'll be talking to you again soon.